The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Uh, this is a real pleasure for me. The, um, the amount of people now, quote, as investigative reporters, as people digging for the truth on who Barack Obama is, seems to grow exponentially every day. Please say good morning. And we have, I don't believe we've ever spoken before. Please say good morning to Dr. Jason Kistner as our guest. He is an associate professor of criminology at California State in Fresno. Um, Doc, good morning, man. Thanks for, I know you're up early, so thanks for doing this with us in Denver. Oh, good morning. It's really good to be with you. Yeah. Um, I feel like Captain Ahab in this story for almost, well, certainly nine years and pushing more. We have chased uh, Ahab's whale, who is Barack Obama. And I was mentioning this earlier, after being called a racist, a Nazi, a Klansman, uh, I added silver shirt to that on my own. But you can have a list of you're the worst human being that ever you know sucked wind because you're because you keep asking these questions, of course. And we already know his life story. He presented it to us. And in fact, it was interesting to see D'Souza get indicted. I had a couple of go rounds on him that weren't fun. And here you come. So first of all, if you would a little bit about yourself and how you got into the fray. Sure. Well, um, I am a, a criminologist. Um, I've investigated gang-related phenomena. Uh, more recently, I've turned my attention to the study of mass murder. Uh, and I suppose I got interested in studying phenomena associated with Obama, partly because I think his policies are horrendous, but also because he's such a mysterious figure. Yeah. And I find it a little bit unsettling that the mainstream media simply refuse to probe even fundamental subject matter about this that's, guy. Well, that's so, or better yet, and I use this example, it's like the church in the Middle Dark Ages. When anyone said something that was contrary to their theology, you became mm -hmm. you were a heretic. And, could, and, and that's what they have done with this story. I say the progressives, the left, and the mainstream press – Anyone who dares ask a question automatically becomes a racist, Doctor. Well, yeah, you know, I, I really like the way you characterize that. It's, it's really a very, I think, duplicitous way, ultimately, for them just to completely shut down yeah. um, substance, shut down debate. Well, worse than that, um, I have been cartooned in uh, the Denver newspapers. Now there's only one columns written about how dare we... Uh, the jacket of Bertha, which I wear proudly. And, you know, when you call these people up and you ask them to appear on your radio show, they say, I will not appear on your hate show, or they simply don't come, they won't return a phone call. Well, from what I can gather, you guys out there are competing with San Francisco for the title of the most socialist city in the United States. It's, so. it's, it's getting there, brother. It's getting there. Yeah. So... Um, so you got when what when in terms of time did you realize that the story wasn't true? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, initially my investigation of his biography uh, centered on his claim that he's a Christian, um, and I did interesting. Yeah, and I did submit something to American Thinker on that and uh, did get some feedback on it. But I just found I – read, I read the two autobiographies, which um, arguably were written by Ayers, not Obama. Agreed. And it just seemed to be preposterous after having done so and then done additional background research. Uh, his claims as to being a Christian are just ludicrous or well, simply he, he, incorrect. Reverend Wright has come out and said uh, those kinds of things. And, you know, Wright himself was a Muslim at one time, and Wright's an interesting character. But we talk about somebody that doesn't exist anymore. But uh, Wright wrote openly about taking, and this time he's, I believe, I don't believe he's a senator yet, but how he takes and tries to find a way, a pathway, for Barack Obama to meld his Islamic beliefs into those of a modern Christian. You've read that, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I, I did read that. 
Um, my personal view is that Obama is more of an atheist than he is a Muslim. Probably. Uh, yeah. my, my, my sense of it is that what he does is he uses institutions, and he molds institutions, uh, manipulates institutions um, to, you know, for political purposes and to mm. um, advance his career. The press is a great example of that. Uh, as I said, not only don't they speak about it, but those of us who do are jacketed by those people. And, and one of the great things that Joel Gilbert has said to the Washington Press Club, he said, there's a Pulitzer Prize for anybody in this room that wants to go get it. Oh, unquestionably yeah, there is. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even, even basic yeah. forms of inquiry. Mm -hmm. So now comes this discovery, if you would, of these Stanley and Saturo, the apps, and we have them up on our website, 710knus.com, and we put up there just to make the case this morning the so-called certificate of live birth that has his father's race as African because of the bizarreness of the death of Loretta Fuddy, who was the woman who releases all of this. Now, um, take it from the top. When people look at these documents, 710knus.com, doctor, what do they see? Are you referring to the birth certificate? Copy? No, no, but, uh, but come back to the 68 apps and the second page of the apps as well, the applications. Oh, 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 oh okay. Yeah, the passport application, right? Yes, and then we'll talk about the certificate. Okay. Well, if you look at the passport renewal application, you'll see on the second page that it says Barack Hussein Obama, and then in parentheses it's got Sola Barca. Um, and intriguingly, if there's also um, Barack Hussein and Phil Barkas crossed out. And if you look at the bottom of the first page of the passport renewal application, which he submitted in 1968, it shows in fine print that you're supposed to cross somebody's name out if, for example, they've become a naturalized citizen of another country. So that, that's an interesting um, aspect there. Uh, but essentially, one gets to wonder exactly what this, uh, I called it a sobriquet in the article, what it means. So that's sort of what prompted the article. And so the second page, Stanley Ann moves to, what, take her son. But where does the other name come from? And we spoke with Jerry Corsi. I've spoken with... Uh, Joel Gilbert. I mean, everybody arrives at the same place. All roads lead to Rome, but they've also come up with GYs, and they're close. Why? Why would she choose this name? Is it to do with the cult? Is it to do with? And Jerry's pretty accurate. And Jerry said, "No, it means the son of Saturo." Mm -hmm. And as you know, you know, you had to be a citizen to go to school there, and you had to be a Muslim. Now he's a mm -hmm. little kid. I mean, seven, eight years of age. And, you know, what your parents do when you're seven or eight, that you don't have much to do with. But did he ride that into getting scholarship money and other things, either at high schools or colleges or getting into Columbia or Harvard? Did he continue to be a dual mm -hmm. citizen? Did he proclaim to be a foreign national? Uh, did mm -hmm. he change? I mean, who the hell is he? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not a linguist, right? Uh, I have seen many people have suggested that Soa Barca... Uh, S O E, maybe is a prefix that means son of. Mm -hmm. as, far, as far as I can gather, it indicates uh, more geographical consideration. That is Javanese. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not too sure about that. Um, but some of the other things that you mentioned, um, I found it very interesting the literary agent document that was released that proclaimed that Obama was born in Kenya. No, oh, indeed. We've seen that. Right. Uh, and, yeah, I found that very persuasive evidence, certainly at the minimum, that that's how he represented himself. Well, I, I for, agree with I, you. I agree with you. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And then there's a story right. about, about getting the advance, then not producing the book, and then the book, and then he goes to, of all places, uh, where does he go? He goes to Mali, or not to Mali, to, to Mali. And he goes there and comes back. Um, right, right. so a bunch of fun in the sun, and then he has Ayers write the book anyway. And then Bill Ayers writes the book. I mean, Jack Cashel clearly believes that, as do others. Yeah. 
But at that point, so there's, there's no there's no evidence whatsoever that Obama is a competent writer. Well, worse so, um, you know, everybody has a ghost. We talk about that when politicians write books. You know, it's always there's another name with, you know, would be Obama's birth certificate, you know, by Barack Obama with, you know, with you or with I mean, that kind of thing. There's no with here. This is his book. And and Ayers, I clear. I mean, Ayers clearly wrote the book. But having said that. You know, the people, when he, when the woman brings him in, she meets him, and she thinks he's a book, he puts, they put down on his app, now I don't know if he told her that, or she, you know, what, how, how it says, birthplace, what's it say? Yeah, I mean, I, I, he has to have told her, it would be my view. I mean, is she just going to generate that out of thin air? No, of course not. <laughs> of, that seems all the, all the countries in the, of all the countries in the world? Kenya? Yeah. 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 Oh, he he made he made that representation to sure. her. I agree. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me put you on hold because we'll come back and talk about the the birth itself, the birth certificate itself. Uh, this is terrific. Um, we have never spoken before. Uh, doctor, he's a PhD. Jason Kistner is our guest, and he did the uh, the great piece again on what we're now seeing in, as you have said, the unexplained mysteries and the scanty documentation in the life of the 44th president of the United States. I'm going to come back to this, doctor, before you continue to, to well, I want you to talk about the certificate itself. And again, I'm always stumped why the MSM, as they say, the mainstream press, and, I mean, anybody, every, I mean, even, even like the straights are afraid of the story. What are we watching happen? Well, what I think you're, you're watching happen is, is very strange. It's, it's simultaneously, the answer to your question, I think, is simultaneously obvious, uh, but, well, let, let me put it this way. What we, what we don't know about Obama is obviously extensive. Even fundamental questions have not been answered. But what I find equally intriguing is that what we do know about Obama is very unsettling. Yeah, it's not true, yeah. And it's not true, yeah. and it hasn't been followed up in many cases. But, yeah. you know... I think I think that many people who are concerned about what the truth is of his biography um, simply aren't willing to consider the possibility mm -hmm. that he did not just materialize from nowhere. Well, that's certainly what yeah. Gilbert believes, and and others believe that this guy is a he's been manufactured, which is so bizarre. Oh yeah, well, he's he's. To me, beyond question, he's been manufactured. Beyond question. Right. I, want I just don't see how a reasonable person could come to any other conclusion. Go to the website, 710 US. Now, I have this theory when this thing first happened, and I said this birth certificate was generated on what's called a PDF file. I don't know much about computers or anything like that. So, But it was done by the guy that I created called Jimmy Down the Hall. The night flight when that woman lawyer from the Seattle law firm that's connected to Obama on a commercial airliner, brings a PDF file to Washington, D.C., and it's dropped just as course he's about to publish this blockbuster book. And, they, and, and, and at that point, it was like the Denver Post, Rocky Mountain News, local outlets, 9-7, Brian Williams. They just they, they went nuts. Here's the real truth, a certificate of live birth. No one examines it, and I believe, this is personal belief, that that woman just flies commercial to, as a mask. But they have on this, and you can go to the website, 710knus.com. It says race of father, and underneath that it says African. Now, mm -hmm. Jerry and, those, and Gilbert and so many great folks have done research five years before, five years after this 1961 date. They've gone to 66. They went back into the first part of the 50s. They cannot find one other black man or woman given the designation of African. Now, African's not a race. And I mm -hmm. think, and this is my personal belief, I mean, it's like saying, what is your race? Well, I'm an American. No, you're not. You know, yes, you're an American citizen, but you're not, a, you're not an American race. And so what I think happened was Jimmy down the hall, who's a little politically correct, you know, 2000, at then it was 2012, little geek, and he, has, he was assigned this. He can't say Negro. It's impossible. He cannot say Negro. He can't say colored. He's been so, you know, beaten into that, you can't say those words. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's a heart attack. And so, I, I, I know what you're saying. And so, yeah. so Jimmy invents, he can't say African-American because that's not a race. So he comes up with African. 
Mm-hmm. And if you could find one other birth certificate from Hawaii that said African, either for the mom or the dad, because they used a the proper term, Caucasian, for Stanley Ann. She, race of mother, Caucasian. So you know when they know that Jimmy knows race, but Jimmy can't say the other things. Do you think that this thing was, where do you think this place, this was generated? And for heaven's sakes, folks, take a look, 710kus.com, and tell me where you've heard of a race of Africans. There's no such thing. So if you would, sir, where do you think all this comes from? Okay. Um, here's what I think is going on with that. I think that, and I know some listeners will be a little bit disappointed, but I, I do think that he was born in Hawaii. I do However, as well. I do as well. Yeah, I do as well. However, I, I, I think that what you saw with that certificate of live birth stuff is a premeditated um, attempt at subterfuge hmm. to distract from what still at that time could conceivably have become a very, very live issue which is the issue of whether he was, in fact, um, adopted and whether he does, in fact, hold dual citizenship as an Indonesian. And I think that passport renewal application is pretty compelling evidence in that regard. And I think that could have been very politically combustible for him, right, because there, there are pretty clear grounds for suspecting that he is a dual citizen. Mm-hmm. And, regardless, and regardless of what the court may have done with that from a political standpoint yeah. that could conceivably have made things very difficult. Yeah, the story is so not I think true. That they, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's a wonderful story. Remember the improbable marriage. Remember I was two and a half when I went to the airport. And you get down these lists of – and this is what makes it a – I mean, we talked this morning about the Wendy Davis story in Texas. And the wheels have come off Wendy Davis. The story's not true. And I asked this woman we we're talking about. I said, "What do you do with Barack Obama right now? Can I do yeah. the, can I keep you? I mean, we got a. I, I I'm gonna we'll move another guest, but we have Joel Gilbert coming up. Can I can I hang on with you, Doc? I got a I got a pause here. Can I do it? Sure. Button. Good morning, everyone. Seven fifty-seven. Three minutes before the hour of eight o'clock. I'm Peter Boyles, and this is a barn burner this morning. I enjoy this so much. January the twenty-fourth, Captain America. Dan Kaplis at nine. Friday the 24th of January, 710 Kane U.S. Weather Center. Weather, 52 the high today, breezy, 60 tomorrow, 52 on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, snow comes back on Monday. I'm skiing with Gary D. tomorrow. Winter Park looks beautiful. Yet there's so many turns in the Obama story. And we have found a new ally. And it's interesting the people who have the, uh, the intestinal fortitude, if you will, to jump into the fight. And the mainstream press runs from the fight, and guys like this run into the fight. And that always makes me so proud. Uh, he's a Ph.D., and his name is Jason Kistner, is our guest. He teaches criminology, and um, he has come on, like, again, with Nick Chase, we talked about, and Jerry was on the radio show this morning, and Joel's coming up, about the, what, what do you best say, Doc? Do you just say the unexplained mysteries of the life of Barack Obama? Yeah, I suppose that's as good a way as any to characterize it. I want to come back to something. I want to stay with the certificate, but I want to come back with the Loretta Fuddy, the Hawaiian state, uh, Hawaii state health director, who was the, quote, releaser of the Obama long-form birth certificate, which I think they didn't release anything. I think that this woman attorney made, that makes this night flight to appear like this. But it's Jimmy down the hall, I believe, that manufactures the certificate itself. But what happens to Loretta Fuddy, and she is in a cult, we were talking about this with Jerry, that it looks like Ann Saturo or Ann Dunham or Ann Obama or Ann whomever had skipped. So take us through all of that, if you would. Right. So Fuddy is said to have met her demise in a plane crash, uh, I guess, what, towards late, uh, mid, mid-December. mid um, and lots of people were very suspicious about that for pretty obvious reasons, such as what you just mentioned. Um, and, you know, it turns out that if you do a search on her, this name Deliana comes up. And when you do additional research, you find that she's associated with this Subud cult, which was rooted in Indonesia. 
um, and subsequently spread to places like Hawaii in the 1960s. And interestingly enough, it's also tied to Chicago. Uh, so Chicago, Hawaii, Indonesia, three locations that have been connected to Obama's life, clearly, in a very pronounced way. Uh, and then you find that Anso Toro also has connections with this cult. It's a very small cult, you know, in global terms. It's a, it's a, it's a small uh, cult. Uh, and it's therefore intriguing to find that the person who presided over the custody of his birth certificate, Mitra Demise in this plane crash, that also links up with uh, and so it's plural being in the same cult as the person who ended up having custody over the birth certificate. It just strikes me as a bizarre hmm. uh, coincidence. I, I would say these are not coincidences. It they can't yeah. be. There's too many. So they they this. Uh, I've spoke with Jerry about it. Do, have you found evidence, Doctor, that puts Anne in the cult or just close to the cult? Yeah, as far as I can tell. Um, just close close to the cult. Although it's not clear to me, given the numbers, how small the, the membership um, is and almost assuredly was, how terribly significant it would be uh, if you know she's formally a member, you know, whatever that whatever constitutes formal membership. Um, I think it odd enough that she was um, associated at all, yeah. particularly when you look at it prospectively, yeah. right? I mean, in other words, if Fuddy had not been linked to this cult, mm -hmm. I think then one looks at her association with members in a different way than one does if one finds out subsequently that Fuddy was, given what Fuddy's fate seems to have been. Agreed. Now, switch over to the birth certificate. I asked the questions about race of father. Uh, you can unlayer this. Uh, it's been done too many times where the birth certificate literally comes apart. What do you think this birth certificate's about, and what else would you want people to look at as they examine it online this morning? Okay. Well, I think Nick Chase did a tremendous piece of work on that um, over at American Thinker. And uh, the, the, type, the typographical characteristics of that document, um, such as the positioning of the letters on the document, the spacing on the document, I think, provide pretty compelling evidence that the document uh, is um, a forgery. And I really do think that they're goading people. They're just cajoling people. Mm -hmm. they, they put this out there because they know that the mainstream media is not going to investigate it. Agreed. They know that it's going to get a lot of people upset. And so I think they do it really to distract from the more fundamental question of, does this guy have dual citizenship? Mm -hmm. And if so, well, what should the country think about that? Indeed. Do you believe, and we're using words like believe, we're not using knowledge, that this is so raggedy, and, you know, uh, but they couldn't trust anybody. There was no one to trust to do this in a professional manner. So the kid that I've called Jimmy down the hall, and Jimmy invents a race of people that don't exist. I think, you know, again, Alfred Hitchcock had something called the MacGuffin, that if you understood that, you understood the film. That's the MacGuffin. Mm -hmm. I think the father's race, African, is, mm -hmm. the, is when you can't find another one like it, I think it's the MacGuffin on Obama, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the many MacGuffins. Well, my, my perspective on that is that it's an inside joke of sorts. That it's a way of putting in people's faces, see, this is transparently, aren't we the most transparent administration ever? This is a transparent forgery, and nobody's going to do anything about it. The mm -hmm. mainstream media is not going to cover it. Isn't mm -hmm. that funny? Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. um, I really think that that figured very prominently into their uh, motivations and maybe even into the process of the generation of the document. You mm -hmm. know, they know that no matter what they put out, it's not going to receive serious scrutiny from the mainstream media. That's so why not have fun with it? That because that you know, it's as good as anything I've heard because it's not legit. 
So let's go right. back. Yeah, um, go back again to the website, 710knus.com. And so finally, as you say, we have Stanley Ann Saturo's 68 app. Her 65 passport has been destroyed. That's another one of these, where did it go, who destroyed it, and why. So she, that's our first page we have up. And this is, again, the Doc's work and Nick Chase's work and so many other folks' work, Jerry's work. But the second page is important, 710knus.com. Anne moves to exclude Barack Hussein Obama, and then we see this strange name. And I was talking earlier, we had Corsi on. When I first heard this name, I don't know, four and a half, maybe three and a half years ago, and I mean, I'll tell you what, Doc, we were the worst human beings sucking air. We were racist clansmen. Uh, why don't we go there? <laughs> I mean, we, he never had another name. He never, and God, here it is. He does have the other name, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, it, it, they, they are just have no shame in just trying to shut down discussion by calling people racist. Uh, but you know what? I think that I think that's getting a little bit old with an awful lot of people. We have a, uh, a, a put-on picture up of Michelle Obama, and I urge people to look at that, too. It makes the case, 710knus.com. So what does this Sui Baca or Sui Barca name mean? You know, I'm not sure, um, but I do find it interesting. I'm not sure what probability we should assign to this, but I, I do find it interesting that upon – uh, that that people who are associated with Subud, um, in many cases, adopt new names. So it's possible that that name is a reflection of and so it poros Subud participation, um, at least the Barca part. You know, I think that the the emphasis now should be on the Barca part, not so much the Stoa part, because I think that's pretty conventional. I think that um, relates to Javanese uh, origin. But the Barca part, you know, a lot of people just want to automatically call that Barak. You know, I suppose it's conceivable that that's true. You know, I'm, I don't know the Indonesian language, and I'm not a linguist, but somebody who is. Jerry said, maybe that, able. Yeah, Jerry said that he had an interpreter tell him that it meant son of Saturo, which would lead us more into that dual citizenship that if, you know, as you as we all know from people who, and not that I know because I did original research, but simply I've listened and read, and mm -hmm. that to go to that school, either one of the, he went to two schools uh, in Indonesia, you had to, number one, be an Indonesian by citizenship, number two, you had to be a Muslim. And is this evidence that he did get another set of citizenship that he traveled on and used well into his 20s and 30s, that he made these proclamations. He traveled under another passport, you know, the trip to see his mother, which she wasn't there. I mean, all those kinds of things. Is this the MacGuffin for that? Well, son of, son of Sartoro could very well be uh, the correct interpretation. You know, another thing to think about in connection with what you've just said is if you look at, the, if you look at his uh, school form, when he was enrolled in an Indonesian school, and Nick Chase has that document mm -hmm. up there too at American Thinker, it makes no mention whatsoever of Sowa Barca. Um, it says Barry Sotoro on his school enrollment form. And then the passport says, passport renewal application says, Barack Hussein Obama Sowa Barca, so making no mention of Sotoro. Tell me, why mm -hmm. wasn't there consistency there? If he's well, called Sotoro, yeah. That's good too. I don't know, but it does exist, and like I said, I, it's like so many things in this quest that more people roadblock it by screaming at you than say, geez, I think you're on to something. Um, I've witnessed this before. I'm sure you've witnessed this before in your investigations. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's just fascinating, Doctor. Uh, what I'd like to do is have you on a rotating basis. We can speak with you for all the research that you've done. Uh, one more thing, and I brought it up earlier, and others have brought it up now that they're reading this, is that you, you say there's three cities, three places, better yet, that play out in the life of Barack Obama. And what are those three places? Well, Chicago, Hawaii, and Indonesia. Yeah. yeah those are locations that kind of are glued to him. Yeah. Yeah. 
if you can go back in time, those would be the three. And, of course, the fact that Stanley Ann flees, if you would, to rock when this baby's two weeks a of age and moved to Seattle. And this is bringing people up that the headquarters of that cult was in Seattle. I don't know if that holds up or not. It's crazy stuff. Well, well, also New York. Don't forget yeah, that one. Yeah. No, that's right. God oh my and, uh, God. and the Business International Corporation, too. People should look into that. I'll tell you what. Uh, we will have you back uh, maybe as early as the middle of next week, and who knows what the weekend will bring on this story. But you're remarkable, and I really appreciate you taking out the time to be with us this morning, Doctor, and joining in the fray, and hopefully we can make you part of our radio team that quests the truth. All right, well, thank you, and good talking with you. Thank you, Doctor. You're terrific. Thank you. Um, the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.